Howdy everyone, Chinese manual focus lenses have been getting cheaper and cheaper these days, but they can occasionally surprise with their quality, occasionally, which leads us on to exhibit A, the TT Artisan 35mm f1.4. Don't mix it up with their larger version for full frame cameras, this tiny conically shaped one is even less expensive and designed for mirrorless cameras with APS-C sensors only. So it's available on Canon EFM, Fuji X, Leica L, Micro Four Thirds, Nikon Z and Sony E-mount cameras, but it only covers a cropped APS-C image circle. And the unique selling point of this lens is clearly its rock bottom price. It can be found for less than $75 new, or even a little less over on eBay. It's quite astonishing that an f1.4 lens can be manufactured so utterly cheaply nowadays, and considering the lens's useful focal length on an APS-C camera, giving a nice standard field of view, then a few people might be interested in this one. Let's take a look at whatever compromises must have been made to get this thing onto the market for such a low price. I'd like to thank TT Art Sound for sending me a copy of the lens for evaluation, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. The lens's metallic build quality feels nice and tough, its unusual aesthetic design even has a diagram of the internal glass elements on the outside. The first obvious compromise is that this is of course a fully manual lens. The manual focus ring turns nice and smoothly, but its size does mean that it can easily be unintentionally touched and changed focus. Here you can see the lens clearly exhibiting some focus breathing as well, zooming in and out as you change focus. Then on the top you get an aperture control ring. It has a nice little click to it at every f-stop, but they're spaced unevenly and you don't get a click for f11 here for some reason. My copy of the lens came with a screw-on cap, but you can also buy this little hood and plastic lens cap combination separately, which is a bit more useful. There's also no weather sealing to be spoken of here, its front filter sizes are very small and unusual 39mm wide. Overall, it's a dead, dead simple, lightweight little lens, as simple as they come, but still quite tough and perfectly usable. Alright, let's take a look at its image quality. I'm testing it here on a Fuji X-T3 camera with its somewhat demanding 26 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. No in-camera corrections are available with this lens. At f1.4 in the middle of the image, contrast is ok, but resolution is a little soft. Over in the corners the image gets a lot softer again, but at least there's little in the way of chromatic aberration. Stop down to f2, and the brightness and sharpness are just a touch better in those corners, and image quality back in the middle looks very good, but not razor sharp. At f2.8, the middle is looking great now, and over in the corners, image quality is starting to pull itself together. At f4, the corners are very sharp, with just a touch of colour fringing right in the edges, and the lens stays this sharp down to about f11, where a little softness does creep in due to the effects of diffraction. Overall, well, you've seen it for yourself. This is about the performance you can expect for such an inexpensive lens, although I have to admit I was expecting things to be slightly worse than this. Anyway, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting now. The lens projects some barrel distortion, which can be noticeable in everyday photos for really discerning photographers. At f1.4, the image corners are quite dark. Stop down to f2 or f2.8 to see them quickly brighten up, so it's an average performance there. The lens has a little bonus feature in that its minimum focus distance of 28cm gets you really close to smaller subjects, which is always fun. Close up image quality is very ghostly indeed at f1.4, stop down to f2 for a lot more contrast there, although the image is still rather soft. However, at f2.8, that sharpness rallies quite nicely, so if you're shooting close up, stop down. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. Goodness me, that's quite a lot of flaring. You should definitely consider purchasing the plastic lens hood for this one, although even that won't fix the problem completely. Keep this lens well away from bright lights. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. It's hard to see what coma smearing is like at f1.4, because the corner image quality is so soft, but it seems obvious to me that there's some smearing on bright lights going on here. You have to stop down to f2.8 or f4 to see more clarity. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. 
They're already quite apparent at F4, but if you stop down to F8 or F11 they get pretty strong. Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh now. At f1.4, you get some nicely out of focus backgrounds here. Generally, they look averagely smooth. The only real problems I could find were the usual cat's eye shape to specular highlights in the image corners at f1.4, with a slightly heavy outline to them. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.4, if you look through all that close-up softness, you can catch some obvious colour fringing on Bokka highlights. At f2, it's slightly reduced though, and at f2.8, it's almost completely gone. Overall, well, I'd sum this lens up by saying that, for a $75 f1.4 optic, it could have been worse. You're not getting an impressive performance from any perspective here, but truthfully, it's not really all that bad. Those of you who are happy to accept its limitations will find that it's quite possible, with a little patience, to get some nice pictures out of it, if you don't care too much about image sharpness. Well, there you go. That was just about one of the cheapest non-pancake lenses I've ever tested. On this channel, I like to test lenses old and new, cheap and pricey. If you regularly watch my reviews and find them helpful, then be sure to check out my Patreon page in the description below. There you can find all kinds of bonus content that I make just for supporters of this channel. And of course, I'd like to say once again a huge thank you to everyone who's already helping out.